I'm going to demonstrate a brief critical limb ischemia assessment now, uh, which we'd usually do in the presence of a non-healing foot or leg wound or constant pain in the foot or toes that has been there for more than two weeks when you're not controlled by usual pain medicines with no other obvious cause and my patient has presented today. So I'll start with I'm getting my kit available here, um, my sphig cuff, my PPG uh, tube, my PPG sensor, my Doppler, my gel, my tape, and my brief critical limb ischemia assessment pro forma to remind me what to do. I've taken a brief cardiovascular history. I'm now going to examine the limb. So first of all, I would palpate for dorsalis pedis pulses, which are usually going to be non-palpable in the critical limb ischemia situation and post tibial pulse behind the medial malleolus. I'm then going to be getting my Doppler and having a listen to the pulses to see if I can hear them and if they are monophasic, biphasic or triphasic. So first of all, I turn my Doppler on. I'm going to be anchored to the foot, angled at about 45 degrees and on for the dorsalis pedis pulse, I'll be searching by switching slowly across the top of the foot there. In this case, we have a multiphasic pulse. I'll now move to the posterior tibial pulse behind the malleolus. Again, I'll anchor my hand to the patient's foot, slide the probe around, and locate the pulse. I would then search for the perineal pulse on the outside of the foot above the lateral malleolus to see if it's audible, which in a critical limb ischemia patient, it may not be. We have an audible perineal pulse there. Once I've listened to all three pulses, I'm next going to take a pressure on the ankle. So I'll get my cuff and I'll put it around the patient's ankle about two centimetres above the medial malleolus and as parallel wrapped as best I can. I will then take that into my left hand. I'll use the Doppler in my right hand because I'm right handed. I'll close my switch and I'll go back onto the dorsalis pedis pulse. I will then compress the cuff until there are no more sounds. I've gone up to about 180 mils of pressure there. Come down slowly on the trigger, waiting for the first sound returning. I then repeat that on the posterior tibial pulse, locating the pulse, closing my valve, inflating the cuff, and taking a pressure on the posterior tibial artery. If I wanted to take a toe pressure, which we would do in people with diabetes or renal disease, I will then unhook my um, cuff and I will use the T tubing, which on one end has the small toe cuff, which I'll put around the patient's toe. Again, principles of parallel wrapping there. I will then attach the other end to the middle of the T-tubing and then the final bit is where I take off the Doppler and replace with the PPG sensor. I'm then going to put that whole unit in between the patient's feet, take a little bit of tape and tape the PPG sensor on the tapes on the black side on this one and the translucent side goes to the skin preferably on the big toe but other toes can be used particularly if the big toe is absent I will then want to attach the final end of the T-tubing and this is where the wires all get crossed over a bit but you do get used to a routine to the unit there. I'll then take my sphig. I will turn on the 
Doppler to recognize the PPG sensor. I'll wait for that to happen, preferably unraveling the tubing as much as possible. And we have a trace on the screen there which indicates pulsatile flow in the big toe. So I'm then going to use two finger compressions on the back of the cuff because it's a small uh, back of the bladder because it's a small cuff today and I'm going to make sure my valve's closed. I'll go up to about 180 mils of pressure. I'll look at my screen which has now gone fairly flat. We'll get that trace back in a second. So we have a flat trace line there and I'll come down by pressing on the trigger to get deflation there on screen trying to stay in the green zone, which is the slow deflation speed. Then we just wait patiently with the pressure on the trigger for the return of flow, which we can see there on screen. I then stop the unit, deflate all the air out, and I can remove the cuff. The test has now been done, so I've got an ankle pressure, I've got a toe pressure, and I've got Doppler readings on the main arteries there. Um, that will give me the information I need to know whether I've got non-palpable pulses, monophasic Doppler signals and low pressures on the ankle or if it's calcified there, low pressures on the toe. So anything less than 50 mils of mercury on the ankle will be indicating critical in ischemia. Anything less than 30 mils of mercury um, on the toe will be indicating critical in ischemia.